So I finally read The Handmaid's Tale by Margaret Atwood. I read it last weekend when I did my social distancing read-a-thon and I will leave a link down below to the vlog that I filmed while I was doing it. I read three books, I read The Handmaid's Tale, I read The Familiars and I also read Peter Pan. So I finally read The Handmaid's Tale and I was so excited to read this because I've had this, I've wanted to read this book for a while and I got it a couple of months ago I think, I think I got it Jan in January. So I was really excited to read it. I mean I feel like most of you will probably know the story of The Handmaid's Tale. You've maybe watched the show, I haven't. I might watch it now, I'm undecided but I'll read the back to you anyway just in case you don't really know but to be honest it doesn't really give too much information. The Republic of, and I assume this is Gilead, I, I read it in my head. I was reading it in my head which is fine but actually pronouncing it out loud is a challenge. The Republic of Gilead, 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 I don't know, offers Alfred only one function, to breed. If she deviates, she will, like dissenters, <gasps> oh my god, dissenters? be hanged at the wall or sent out to die slowly of radiation sickness. But even a repressive state cannot obliterate desire. Neither Alfred's nor that of the two men of which her future hangs. I think I bought this book without actually reading the back and I was like, oh, is this going to be some sort of like love, not to love triangle, but is it going to be a, bit, a little bit of a love story? So like obviously she maybe falls in love with somebody or whatever. So I think I kind of formed my own opinion based on like what was on the back of the book or what I thought it was kind of what was gonna happen. I actually really enjoyed this book. I love the, the setup. I feel like it was a good amount of world world building. I will admit though there were a lot of times a lot of phrases were thrown in and I didn't really understand them. Like I feel like we were told things in a sense of like oh there's a guardian. People were referenced being eyes. Like eye eyes. Obviously we knew what the handmaids were, it's the women that are, they live in someone's house and they have intercourse with the husbands to produce children because they, either the man maybe can't produce or the woman is, the woman gets blamed I think is the kind of thing, it's the kind of, the system is basically that men can do no wrong, it's the woman's fault, it's the wife's fault for not being able to have a child, it's got nothing to do with the husband. So the handmaids are basically there to have kids for that family, which is really dark, really twisted, and I don't know if I could watch the TV show because I don't know if I really want to watch that, you know? But anyway, that aside, so the actual world build, the build up, the world building was great. And I have to admit, this is where I kind of realised though, like the first 200 pages or so I felt were mostly talking about the past a little. We got fragments over time. We never quite got like just the full story. It was fragments over time. So you were having to kind of piece things together. There was names dropped or she talked about her mother. She talked about her husband. There, there was a lot of stuff just kind of thrown in over time. And obviously it kind of jumped back and forward from the, the past, her past life, when she first was like a handmaid when she was with, I'm gonna call it in training because she was with like all the other handmaids and they were basically being taught. So that was great. I enjoyed all the kind of the build up but by about page 200 I realised the story itself I just didn't really feel like much had happened. Yeah it was exciting to really learn about this world and I wanted to know more like I really wanted to know why this happened, how this happened. Like I know they made a, made a mention to like the president being killed or senate being taken down basically and it was like this un underground army suddenly appeared and they were obviously like god loving people I think because they referenced the bible a lot like Adam and Eve so I'd love I'd love to kind of know more about maybe that the sequel has more about it but I'm undecided at the moment if I'm going to make a sequel or not because I thought it was going to be more about Alfred but I don't think it is so that's kind of sad so I was kind of like oh I really want to know more I want to know where this army just suddenly I'm calling them an army I wanted to know where the people these people suddenly came from that they just form like some sort of group and then they rose up but I feel like a country like America you couldn't imagine some army just suddenly coming in and the next thing the president's on his knees and life as we knew it is suddenly all gone. 
but apart from that I feel like the world building was pretty good there were just like I said a few references to or terminology that I just didn't really understand like I wanted to know more like so what it, define what a guardian is define what this eye is they're obviously a spy I think angel did they call them angels was that like the kind of soldiers so and they kept talking about war how they were fighting war so I take it that must mean they're maybe fighting to take over different areas so they maybe clapped down in one area like America and they were going elsewhere I really don't know like I just wish I had a bit more more insight but I, I suppose we're being told what Alfred knows and Alfred doesn't know an awful lot so I guess there's that after a while after I got about 200 pages into it and I realized there's only 300 pages I was like wait two men on which her future hangs what what two men's that gonna be like by this point at the 200 page mark you're more than halfway into it and I was like wait so but apart from like I'm pretty sure they had a kiss with one guy nothing ever they never really had any like real interaction that was the comma groundsman but he was like a kind of what was his name i forget what he was but he basically he was like he was he drove the car and he was he was, he was a glorified chauffeur basically but he lived he lived above the garage i think he was called nick i thought oh she's gonna have some sort of relation with him nothing of that really came about till near the end so i felt like i was waiting for something and by about 200 pages into it I was like huh I think that's the problem when you read a book in a when you read a book and try and read it in a day you don't notice at first that nothing's really happening until you get to the end and you're like wait a minute what was the what was the story because I do feel like I feel like the first 200 pages would have been amazing if this was like a 500 page book so the first 200 pages not an awful lot happens but it's all to do with information feeding it's telling you all about this world a few little things were happening Alfred was going to her daily visit to the shops with another handmaid called off Glen because they have to go in pairs everywhere after a while I realized all we had was just like world building and a little little bits of story but not an awful lot of plot we went to one birthing, which was great. They called the baby a shredder. Like they, afterwards, they said oh, it was a shredder, and I was like, "Well, what does that mean? What's a what's a shredder? Is it like a is it a maybe like a child born with like a disability or some form of syndrome?" I, they just called it a shredder, and I was like, "Oh, okay. So what is? So the baby's not okay, or there's something wrong with the baby? The, the baby was fine when it was born, but then afterwards they referred to it saying, "Oh, the baby wasn't good after all. It was a shredder," and I was like, "What? What's a shredder?" like a paper shredder. The rest of the book I feel like I got a bit lost. She started playing Scrabble with the man of the house, the commander as he was called and that was fun. I was like oh they're gonna have like a fun little friendship <laughs> and then he took her to this place where now this is what got me. This is the part that got me okay. Everything in this book so far has been super strict um, men aren't allowed to basically touch women only like the handmaids that are in like a specific house the commander can do the do with them to produce so basically they don't want you to they don't want you to get up to no good for no reason other than to have kids that was fine okay it was a bit, a bit old-fashioned I would say but okay so then the commander takes Alfred to this place and the only way I can describe it is like a whorehouse basically it's it's a whorehouse and there's like there's aunts there that kind of run it I don't know there's other commanders and stuff and Alfred's so surprised that this place exists and I was so surprised that this place exists because I was like wait a minute I know that like they kind of make reference to like all oh, men are weak anyway but like I actually can't believe that this would be allowed to happen in this world that is so so this world that is so strict this is allowed to happen and people don't People don't know about this is allowed to happen and people whoever it is that implemented all these new rules don't know about it really really that was about the kind of lost me I was like where is this story going I take it the commander was one of the two main of which her future hangs and the other one must have been Nick but I feel like there wasn't an awful lot of interaction up until the last hundred pages or so she started playing Scrabble with the commander I guess I just feel like looking looking back at it and once I was finished I was a little bit disheartened because I actually did really enjoy this book 
I wish it was longer and I just wish there was a bit more to it. That's all. <laughs> I just feel like it was so good. It was so well written. The only thing I will say, there was a lot of, I don't normally mind this in books, but I know some people don't like it, but there was a lot of telling instead of showing, especially when like, most of the time if Alfred's talking about the past or past conversations this really bothered me but whenever Alfred was talking about past conversations she never used quotation marks when it was a conversation from the past so to begin with I was like because because there was so much telling instead of showing happening when I first read or when I was first reading it and uh, sentences were being thrown at me that was obviously a conversation there was no quotation marks and I was like oh okay so you'd be reading a sentence and thinking it was still like Alfred telling you something but then it would say something like Cora says Cora said and I was like oh oh somebody's talking what is this how the book's gonna be written does she not use quotation marks but then when conversations were being held in present day there were quotation marks so I was like well, I feel like you could you can still use quotation marks even if you're talking about a conversation that was had in the past it just helps the whole point really of a quotation mark is so that you know it's being said by somebody and not just what you're thinking so that really bugged me it bugged me that there was no quotation marks for like past conversations and there was a lot of telling even stuff that was happening from the like the first point where this book starts to where it ended stuff that would have been like in present day still got reference to like in the past so like perhaps like time would maybe skip forward and she would relive a conversation or something that had happened before we probably would have seen it if the timeline just went but rather than like so she talk about it in the past so you got all that kind of like telling you what had happened telling you what was going on rather than showing you and I've never normally minded books if they maybe tell you instead of showing it's really not something that bothers me all that much as long as it's still told in a way that's quite nice and it's easy to understand I think that's fine so it doesn't bother me all that much but I know some people don't like that there's a lot of telling instead of showing it's such a shame in a way that and it's not that I didn't like the book I've only given it three stars out of five and I think that's only because the hype and I was so excited to read this probably just did just I hyped it up too much and then I read it and I was kind of like oh <laughs> so once I did read it I was a little bit disheartened because I just felt like oh there wasn't an awful lot really happening I mean yeah we had we had one birth we went to one birth we had off Red and off Glen's many visits to the shops, their, like their daily outing. Um, we had some interaction with Nick, the, I'm going to call him the groundsman because I really can't remember what his proper job tech would be. Her interaction with the commander, the commander's wife, the two, I think they were called Martha's, which are kind of like, they were kind of like housekeepers, they were two kind of cooks. Cora and Rita, we had our interaction with them. Uh, obviously a lot of references to the past like the proper past before all this kind of happened and then a lot of references to what life was like and I think the red center I think they called it was where they basically were taught how to be handmaids what else happened then at one point I don't really want to give away sort of the ending but I will just say that the ending really left me unsatisfied because and I get why in a way that it was done that way it was left what do they call that like open-ended meaning like it could have went many different ways and because Alfred doesn't know what's going to happen we don't really know what's going to happen and it just sort of ends and so I was disappointed when I found out that the testaments isn't actually about Alfred so we just don't really know where that story went which is a shame I don't have a lot of high hopes for it <laughs> because I was really enjoying it and I think I would have loved this if this was like a 500 page book and the first 200 pages was all the build up and that's great for a book I love if a book has plenty of world building to start with with some plot thrown into it but I would just felt like I was waiting for something to happen and then I felt like time was running out I was getting near to the end of the book the the two men in which your future hangs I felt like that didn't come till near the end and then all of a sudden different things happened and I was kind of like I guess there was a lot of questions left unanswered about like Offred's family and obviously she doesn't know where they are if they're even alive so we don't really get to know so that's a bit shit. There were just a lot that I feel I had a lot of high hopes for it and I guess I maybe overhyped it to myself 
so that was a shame. But it was still a really good book. I may only have given it 3 out of 5 stars, but that's just because I felt I was missing something. I just, I don't know, I feel like I was... It was still a good book though, and honestly, like, the world itself, I feel like the world was so well done. It's a terrifying world, it's a terrifying dystopian. It would be horrific if that happened, it was awful. Like, women were basically praised for their ability to give birth and have, and reproduce. But then they were also shit upon, basically. I'm not like to be a handmaid, I tell you. I would make sure that I came from good birth and found myself a commander husband. <laughs> it's awful. It oh, it, it's a, it sounds like an awful world to live in, but it was quite fascinating. And Margaret Atwood, I know I read somewhere that she said nothing went into this book that hadn't happened in real life at some point in time somewhere in the world and I thought that's such a it's a powerful message it's also as a writer I feel like that's it's quite creative actually to incorporate stuff that has happened in real life into a novel like this and then we look at it and we think oh my god this is horrific but to think this is actually happening or has happened probably is still happening somewhere around the world it's brutal and it definitely does make you think. So I applaud her for that. I applaud her for her storytelling because I did really enjoy this book. And I read it all in a day. I didn't feel like at any point I was frustrated with it or anything like that. I just maybe wished there was more to it. But then that's my own fault for overhyping it. So I gave it a three. But anyway, so I think that's everything I really wanted to say about this book. I can't think of anything else. So I guess that is the end of this video. My legs are dead. My leg is falling asleep <laughs> so thank you so much for watching this little is it a rant review i wouldn't call this a rant review i just had a few issues <laughs> but i thank you so much for watching this video and i hope you're all doing well in isolation and social distancing social distancing is fun <laughs> yay so i have plenty of i have a couple of videos already filmed pre-recorded that i'm currently editing that i'm gonna put up over time but I'm gonna have all this time on my hands now because I won't be doing anything else. So thank you so much for watching and I shall see you in my next video. Whatever that may be. <laughs> Bye guys.